Kids and Entertains. I'm Jules Schmitz, accompanied by James Jackson, Jake Galley, and crunch the numbers in the back, we got Stat Matt. This past week in sports, the Pro Football Hall of Fame held its annual enshrinement ceremony and opening preseason game in Canton, Ohio. The 2022 World Cup workers in Qatar go on strike to protest the 1,400 workers who have died working on the stadium. The NBA passes a rule that each franchise must have a mental health consultant on their staff. Tom Brady also signs a two-year contract extension with the Patriots. Now, everybody, as we know, uh, this part of the calendar year is a little dry for sports, so we're going to ditch the facts straight at you this weekend. We're going to get a little creative. Um, I'm going to pin my two lovely co-hosts over here together in a friendly wager to see who knows more of the facts. Uh, We'll go through the NBA, the NFL, the MLB, and finish it off with some random trivia questions. Gentlemen, state your wagers. This is fun. I like this. I like I like this. It's a good sport. This is a good yeah, okay. So my wager, if if when. When I win, my my partner over here, Mr. Jake Galley, will have to sport the lovely colors of the pewter and gold and, and wear a Buccaneers something hat, shirt, jersey if he can find one. Okay. On the next on the next episode and wear it loud and proud. I'm even gonna throw in you have to hit a fire the cannons one time. Okay. So long as you don't ask me to spell, I always struggle with spelling the Buccaneers. Uh, I don't ask too long of a name. Volunteer franchise. But, so then R-S. on the inverse of that I guess I'll give you something to wear. And you you're I'm not going out and buying an own my own. You got to give me some one of your Buccaneers. God, no, you got to buy. It. No, I'm not buying. I listen. You have to go out. And James, this is this is like this is like a loss. Zeke Elliott negotiation. The deal <laughs> I'm about to go hold out from the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I will give you a piece of my Eagles memorabilia. You you give me a piece of Bucks. Fine, whoever enough. wins wears, or whoever loses rather wears the uh, others' colors for the podcast. There you have it. We're shaking. It's bound. Camera. Let's get underway. I'm doing this for all my Buccaneers fans out there. We will have another All five of them. So we're going to kick it off with the NFL Part 1 with the QBs for the last two seasons with 2017 and 2018. Player A with a 14-8 record, 45 touchdowns, 17 interceptions, and 8.3 yards per attempt, 66% completion, and 103.1 passer rating versus Player B who had a 16-8 record, 54 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, 7.6 yards per attempt, and 65% completion at a 102.0 passer rating. What do we think? So let's just, just for the people listening and not looking, just to break down the stats, uh, player A has a worse record, Mm -hmm. but it throws less touchdowns, but has a higher yards per attempt, higher completion percentage, and a slightly better passer rating. Passer rating, right. It's tough because it could be a lot of guys. This so, could be a, a lot of guys, and especially for player A, if this is over two years, I mean, he hasn't played a whole lot of right, games. Right, doesn't play a whole lot of games, which a couple players come to mind yeah. when you think about that. 16 and 8, 54 touchdowns over two seasons. Um, again, it's not the most in the world. They're not leading the league with those numbers. Oh, my God. But, like, I don't. Like 54, that, you know what I mean? That's. It's right, mid twenties each season. That's not a whole lot. And here's the other thing: is uh, now that we're matched up against each other, I don't really want to. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to give away too much of, of who I think this could be. Well, here's here's what I'm thinking: for at least player A, um, we, he doesn't doesn't score a whole lot, but throws the ball away a little bit. I see those 17 interceptions compared to those 45 touchdowns. It's not a bad ratio, but over two years, that's that's not anything good. But 8.3 yards per attempt. You know, he, he likes to go down the field a little bit. Not not dink and dunk, you know what I mean? So, uh, both yeah. mid-60s, both have a good completion percentage. The 103 passer rating is making me take out some quarterbacks. Originally, when I saw this, I'm thinking, like, Jameis, maybe. Jameis is not above. Jameis is not above 100. No, and and, and what what gets me is just the games played, like the 14-8 and eight record for player A. Um, is just throwing me a little bit. Like, I feel like it might be... One of my one of, one of my guys here, one of my favorite guys uh, with the Eagles, but I, I'm not sure. I'm I uh, think it's time to lock in. It's time to lock yeah, in. Yeah, lock time to lock in your answers here. I think what in. we should do is we both have player A and B write down or have in your mind who they are, and I don't know if we say it at the same time <laughs> or how. Here's what we'll do. I'm gonna read mine off first, and then you have to. To confirm that you're not just going to hop on a, oh, that, j- that was a good answer by Jake. In your notes, write who you think it is. Okay. And then we can confirm. So, 
for player A. I think that this is, and also this is uh, our guy Stat Matt cooked up all these comparisons, and uh, he has a good sense of humor. So for fourteen and eight, oh man, like for player A, I'm going to go with Carson Wentz. I do. I don't know if the records match up, but it makes sense. High high yards per attempt. He throws the ball downfield. And B, I don't want it to be Dak Prescott, but it very well could be Dak Prescott. I'm Dak gonna go Prescott's went, a good one. I'm going to go what? Yeah, see, exactly. That's why I had you as a great set. I don't want you, don't Dak, want you jumping Dak, on my Dak Prescott. Dak Prescott's a good one. Which we could be totally off base, but I'm going to go Wentz for A, and player B is Dak Prescott. Who do you got? Okay, so... Player A, I also I had Carson Wentz. Oh, I, said, no, I did, I did, I did. I had Carson Wentz. Player B, originally I had Aaron Rodgers, forgetting that he missed a bunch of games last year. The numbers for Player B would probably suggest someone like Aaron Rodgers. I mean, both these guys miss games. Both uh, these guys miss Joel games. Joel was laughing. <laughs> like, like Joel was like, just, I, I can't wait to tell you the answer. Like, <laughs> it's gonna be all, one of them's going to be Foles it's, or something. It's like. going to be, it's going to be so. All right, so I have Wentz and so Dak. You have Wentz and Wentz, Rodgers. Wentz and, no, I, I did have Rodgers. I'm changing it now. Wentz and Ben Roethlisberger. Ben, was, okay, was big one. Ben. Jewel, would you care? Yeah, any of them right? I would like care. So, the, like, player A, <laughs> yeah. you ready? Yep. Deshaun Watson. Wow. Okay. Uh, that makes sense. Okay. Player, player, is player B. Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz. Oh! <laughs> I knew I'd That's see. That's so awesome. I knew you guys said it at the beginning. So it is an interesting comparison. We, um, the Eagles faced off against the Texans. Actually, Nick Foles, I believe, played in that game. It was right after Wentz got yeah, hurt. Yeah. But, like, right people like to write off Deshaun Watson. Uh, he is a ve- still an extremely promising And I, no disrespect to Deshaun Watson, he escapes both of our minds. When I'm thinking, when I'm looking at these, exactly, we, right. we were both up to top-tier quarterbacks, and I guess maybe we have to start thinking Deshaun Watson as that. For a little bit of context, Jake had Dak Prescott as one of his answers. Dak, in, over the 2017-28 seasons, has 44 touchdowns, 21 interceptions, and a 91.9 passer rating. So you weren't in 7.1 yards per attempt. So you weren't crazy off. Right. He you was, weren't he crazy was off. That's a good guess. And I, I gave you that credit. Mm-hmm. I wasn't even thinking back until you said it. That's a, right. that's a good one. All right. So right now, the score is 0-0. Zero, zero, zero. Zero. I, I didn't get Carson. I got him mixed up. So 0-0 right, right, yeah. zero, zero is the score. You guys got to think of my bias as on that question. That's, that's true. true. Right. <laughs> Thank you. That's what, that's that's what I'm true. saying. I know Stat Matt. He's a wry sense of humor. So mm-hmm. all right. All right. Let's go into question All right. Two. Moving on. for We're still going to stay in the category of the NFL. Okay. Um, running backs for the 2017-2018 season. Player A with 1,611 rushing yards. 22 rushing touchdowns on 5.1 yards per carry with 162 receiving for 1,535 yards and 9 receiving touchdown versus player B who had 1,533 rushing yards, 9 rushing touchdowns on 4.6 yards per carry with 187 receiving for 1,000 518 yards and 11 receiving touchdowns. Who do we think it is? So we got two dual threat backs right here. Mm-hmm. Like and it's so two ones. right. Uh, player B he catches the ball a little bit more. 11 receiving touchdowns compared to nine receiving touchdowns um, and 20 more receptions than player A. But player A is 22 rush t- rushing touchdowns to player B's nine. Um, Stat Matt providing us a good hit right here from the same draft class. Okay, that helps narrow it down. Uh, I think I actually, I'm going to, I think, I won't reveal too much, but based on the guys who were in the same draft class that I'm thinking of, could also very well fit. Now it's just for me determining which one is which. Which (laughs) one is which. I think Uh, I have two names. I have two names also from the. All right, here, I will write down in my notes now. If you, uh, just wait a second. But if you want to read off your guys first, um, see, I'm also, I'm also, it's, it's like which one is who? Because I think I have ballpark. I think I have that's Matt. You need to. Matt's got this devilish <laughs> smile on his face. It's very fun for him. And I didn't realize how nerve wracking this was gonna be for me. Okay, my pride is very on the line here. Do you want me to go first? Very, very open. No, I'll go first. All right, you go first. first. Okay. So let me, let me, let me think out loud a little bit more here. Um, so the, the for player A, player A is really escaping me because he has 
He's got more yards per carry. He's got five yards per carry. So I know he runs the ball well, but he also catches it out of the backfield so well. Also has nine receiving TDs. I think player one is Todd Gurley. Okay. So Todd Gurley, I'm going to go player one. But then that limits who I can say for player two because they're in the same draft class. And I'm actually not sure if this player is in the same draft class, but I'm going to go with them anyway. Player B is Alvin Kamara. Ooh. Okay. So I actually had for player A, I had Alvin Kamara. He's got great yards per carry. I know that. Um, and, and both of these guys catch the ball a ton. Player B, now again, I'm like, did he find the same draft class? I think player B is Christian McCaffrey. Oh, that's a good one. He catches. It's and like, he doesn't have a whole lot of rushing TDs. Not, not a whole lot of rushing TDs, more receiving TDs. He catches a ton, which in Carolina's offense, they throw to him uh, a buttload. So, Jewel. Let us know. Who, the right. Who's got it right? Gentlemen, we've got a we've got a score now. Oh, oh so no. scored. Player A, Alvin Kamara. Ah! Oh. Player B, Christian McCaffrey. Let's oh. go! <laughs> <laughs> so okay, what does that count? Does it count that I'm, That's I'm two out? Well? That's two out. Right. Oh, there it's it is. Two well. I'm gonna write it down. The early lead. All right, we got two out for you. Awesome. How do you is feel? Todd Gurley, is Todd Gurley in the same no, draft cars no. no, I shouldn't have been that, That's question. a good class. We, we, maybe that's your next deep dive, Matt, is that, uh, that running back into, class? into that running back class because they got some good ones. All right, so we got Jake up 2 0. Oh, must feel nice. Big lead, big lead. <laughs> we're we're going to have to shift Jake, it over. Go ahead and get comfortable then. Go ahead and get comfortable then. Uh, we're about to stretch it. All right, let's shift it over to the NBA for part one Hall of Famer stats in 2010s. Okay. Player A, who averaged 25, 5, and 5 per 36. On 53.1 true shooting, had 36.2 win shares, won one championship, one finals appearance, won six playoff series, four time all NBA, two time all defense, okay. versus player B, who averaged 18, 11.5, and 3.5 per 36 on 54.5. Percent shooting, sh- true shooting, had 55 win shares, mm. won one championship, made two finals appearances, won 11 playoff series, was three time voted all NBA, and also three time voted all defense. Wow. Um, all right, so just off my, my first initial takeaway is player B has 55 win shares compared to 36. Like, yeah. he's putting in some major work for his team. Um, however, the, the stats kind of, he, he's not as much of a scorer. Uh, player A is 25, 5, and 5, where he is, player B is 18, 11 and a half, 3 Player and a half. B, for me, sounds like a big man. Right, okay. 18, um, 18 and 11, and, and 3 and a half, Stat Matt chefing us a hint here. Player B is frontcourt, as you player. said. Player A is backcourt. That, that actually, that, that helps me a lot. That leads, I had a hunch on who these two were. It actually um, takes away who my hunch was for player A. I think, all right, I'm going to lock in my guys lock in my in notes. Um, but I also could be very wrong because I think player A, who I think player A is, I think I, I'm, I'm discrediting See, the player play, I'm going so to So player A, player A went one for one in the finals, right? Player A Correct. was only But that's one only in the 2010s. Right, right, only in the 2010s. Yep. So now I'm trying to think of who, who are teams that only went to one finals from 2010 till now. That's kind of what you got to think about. Yeah. Um, so I, I think I'm, I think I'm going to be really wrong on player A, but there's really um, only one team I can think of from 2010 till now. Ooh. Yeah, actually, now that you say that, I kind of yeah. No, I gave you too much. Uh, you did give me a little bit, but I'm not. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna hold strong. I'm going to keep my answer, even though I did just change my B. Um, but okay. But I I don't think that changes too much. I think I'm probably gonna be wrong either way. But without further ado, you want me, are you locked in? I'm locked you want in. Me to, okay. Uh, for my player A, someone who is a consummate scorer and was in one of one. And this is where I wish I had that stat mat ability to go back and recant all the yeah, all, all the, the champions. Yeah, all that you can be, do. Because I think that there's a very good chance the guy that I say was in way more finals and won way more playoff series, but it was towards the end of his career. Player A for me is going to be one Kobe Bean Bryant, and player B is going to be Kevin Garnett. I, I, I was going back and forth. After you say your guys, I'll tell you my other B, but go ahead. Uh Player, actually, I have the same player B. I have Kevin Garnett. Oh, okay. Um, player A, 
I know it's not Kobe Bryant because the Lakers didn't win the championship. There you go. I knew I was discrediting in, in, in 2010. In well, I guess I was giving him more credit. He didn't win. Yeah, he didn't. He didn't win one. And I'm still like racking my brain for who for for 2010 because this is this is my thought process. 2010 was the was the Heat Mavericks, correct? That's incorrect. That, that is incorrect. incorrect. Who was 2010? 2010 was the Lakers over Celtics. Lakers Celtics. Uh oh. Oh, so then you. Uh oh. All right, hey, 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 you already have your lock. I know, I did not. I never had locked in. Oh, you 100% have locked in. I never had player. I never had player. This is so fun. I never had player locked in. This is incredible. I never had player locked in. He's gonna try to cheat. Oh, my God. He's gonna try to cheat. Just go ahead and tell me. Just go ahead and hop on my wave. No, no, James still has to answer. James still has to steal my answer. Go ahead. <laughs> Play Ace Kobe Bryant. Oh, <laughs> that's sick. That's sick. <laughs> Hopefully the viewers, you can come on. This is ridiculous. Listen, I never that I never locked in player A. Alright, come on. Give me your player A. But I just didn't. Give me your player Yo, so it's it's I have the, I have the same guesses. Is that not allowed? What I have locked okay, in. Okay, Joel, tell me who it is. Alright, so that was that was one all. Kobe Bryant for the first one and Tim Duncan for the second. Tim Duncan. <laughs> Wrong mm. power forward. Made two finals appearances gonna, who, in the 2000s. Who were you going to go with before I said that? Before, well, I was going to go with before before Stat Matt gave us the hint that player A was backcourt. I was going to go player A was going to be Dirk Nowitzki. Okay, Dirk was actually going to be my player B. That's, player That's funny. B, yeah, but I was thinking Dirk. Dirk averaged more than eighteen. So Dirk then it is. It's three one now, or do we just not? Is it like? Uh, I just want to negate it. Is it still two one? Is it three one? <laughs> three one. Three one. Go three one. Go three one. Yep. Oh, you got a three one lead. Ah. <laughs> Getting on to the next uh, NBA part two. Uh, the NBA Hall of Famers from different eras. Player A is from the 80s and 90s. Player okay. B is from the 2000s and 2010s. Both players are listed at six foot eight inches, were top three draft picks, and never made an NBA Finals. Ooh. Also, okay. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna give you the regular and the postseason stats as well. Okay. Player A regular season stats. 24, 6.5, and 3.0 on 54.2% true shooting. Player B regular season stats, 25, 7, and 2.5 on 53.6% true shooting. Player A postseason stats, 24.5, 7, and 3 on 51% true shooting. And player B postseason stats with 25, Seven and three on fifty-one percent true shooting. Matt, I don't know how old you think we are, but I don't know too many players from the eighties and nineties that didn't make a finals. Most of the I you know, players. you've absolutely heard of this player. I know, I probably, definitely probably heard of him. My, um, my total recall six eight. Look, look, look. Here's what I will say: six we, eight is a good. Is a we, good. he's six eight? He was a top three draft pick and never made an NBA finals. Like that's almost, a couple of them. That's a, that's almost enough to like do it without the stats. What, what pops to me is that. Their postseason stats, player A and B, are almost identi identical. They're identical. Yeah. Uh, player A scored half a point less, but other than that, they're completely from identical. From each other and from themselves from regular season to postseason. Yeah. Like, if, you, if you look at like their splits wow, yeah. from regular season and then go to the postseason, like, they, they didn't change at all. Like, they're both, they got, they, their production literally did not waver. Okay, I think I know the player from the 2000s, 2010s. I, I, I think. I want to think I know it. I think I know it. It's six, eight, no, six, eight is two. Yeah. Because for, for the 2000s and 2010s, I'm thinking uh, first person My that came to mind was is, Paul I George. was surprised to find out that player B was six eight. I thought he was shorter. Okay. You thought he was shorter. He thought he yeah. was shorter. See, the first um, the first person that popped to my mind for the 2000s 2010s was Paul George. But Paul George was not a top three draft pick. Yeah, uh, I actually he was not far, but he's, he wasn't he was top like three. 10. Yeah, he was he wasn't top. Three. I want to say my guy because I don't think he's six eight, but I also think that he could be the answer. I am apprehensive to say who I think. B is, but I'm still racking my brain for the 80s. Well, what's going on down there? Gee, oh, you're locking it in. You're locking it in. Okay, I thought, I thought you were Googling. I thought you were Googling. I put a hint on the board if you want Player to Player A, that further Ooh. kind of pushes my assumption. I'm not going to... Official decision, I'm not going to tell you who I was about to say. I think it is. But for Player B, what's really throwing me is the 80s and 90s if you're a top three pick and you never... Actually, you know what? Well, Player A is 80s, 90s. Player B Player A is 80s, 90s. Player okay. B's. Um. Oh, never mind. So player A won the dunk contest, and he's from the 80s and 90s. We're getting a ton of hints here. 
I think I know who my player A is. Um, uh, 80s and 90s. Uh, that's tough for me. Oh, no, I like I like my player A guess, Jay. Do I get to steal it like you stole mine? I didn't steal your... Don't be salty. Like, I didn't steal your player A uh, guess. I don't know about that. All right. Well, then I'll go first, then. Wait, no, I don't have I'll my guys yet. I don't, I don't have my guys. guys. I don't have my guys either. No, wait, I'll, don't go... Don't, but no, no. I'll go first. No, I'm going to put the pressure on you a little all bit. All right. Mr. 3-1 lead. All right, fine. Then I'm just going to match whatever. That could, that could be a nice little <laughs> run out the clock. Listen, listen, listen. Just let listen, you go listen. first and match. Listen, no, because I presented you. I told you. I, sh I showed you my phone that when I had my, my things. So you can't just bring them out of nowhere. You really trying to cheat. Uh, like, that's crazy. <laughs> I'm not trying to cheat. Like, that's, all right, all right, all right. That's go crazy. ahead and give me who you think it is. Okay. Um, I don't have my player B yet for the 2000s and 2010s. I'll give you my player A. And if you lock in a player A, we'll give we'll give player A's before we give player B's. Okay, because right now I'm struggling. I'm with struggling player for a. player. Won a dunk contest. Oh, I'm struggling with player B. Nineties. The guy who I could think it was did not play in the eighties. Or I just don't 80s. know. I just he don't know this guy's so draft. I just don't know where this guy was drafted. I'm pretty sure he was drafted very high, but I'm not sure. I'm gonna give you my player A, Jewel. I'm gonna, we're gonna lock. Don't tell me if it's right or not. We're just gonna lock it in. My player is Dominique Wilkins. Ooh, that's a really good one. That's like almost like a stealable good one. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to do it? No. We should, we should build in. Oh, that's so we, good. You have, you, have three, you have three rights, right? Every every two rights you get, you get a steal. Okay. So you have accumulated I'm a not going to steal. I'm going to stick. I think, I don't know if he won. I don't know. Do we get know. a player B hit, Matt? I don't know if he won a dunk no, contest. No, you cannot. We don't get a player B hit? <laughs> my player that's A. Crazy. My player A is going to be Chuck Barkley. Um, I don't know if the rebounds match up. Chuck I think... Barkley made a finals, man. All right, so it's not going to be Chuck Barkley. <laughs> I'll For... give you that one back. I'll give you that one back. All right, all right. All right. I'll, you know what? I, I want to take your Dominique. You're I'm going to take Dominique. Dominique, Dominique. Dominique, lock me in for Dominique on A. On B, I feel like because of hint A, it can't be this guy. But, oh, he's not 6'8". Fuck it. I, I, it. I think it's Blake Griffin. Because when you look at those numbers, 25, Ooh, 7, and 3, drafted top good. 3, never made a playoff. Blake Griffin's like 6'10". That's what I'm saying. He's 6'10". I don't care. Never made a finals. Definitely never made a finals. Think, I know you know that. Right. I, don't look. Just because you can't think of one, don't take shots at me now. Here we go. Let me let me think out loud a little bit. Here we go. Um, Mid-20s in scoring, a 50% true shooting. That's a, that's a really good true shooting percentage. But that's why I think it's a, like, like a... Kind of like a Blake Griffin esque, maybe. Like I would a, think that they're probably the same type players. Right, this I would is, think it's, a, it's like a, you like catch up here. Right, like a like a Draymond Green type player is what I'm thinking. Draymond made a finals, but a player like that, um, player B played with Chauncey Billups. You've already locked in your player B, so that screws you. So thank you for that hint. Whatever, look, stat Matt, we can give you. You need all the help you can get. <laughs> I want to tie that. Tie this baby <laughs> up right now. Played with Mr. Big Shot. But Blake never Griffin did play with Chauncey Billups. Huh? At the end of his career. Alright, Matt giving away more answers. Blake Griffin <laughs> did play with Chauncey Billups. Yeah, and the Clippers. Yeah, yeah. The Clippers. He's also probably not 6'8. He's not. He's, so he's not, not 6'8. Six six so let me think of the Chauncey Billups teams real quick. I know it's not the the throwback Pistons. They obviously made a finals. He went to the Nuggets, right? Backed yeah, up, he was on the Nuggets. Backed up uh, AI was with Melo in them. Uh <laughs> Player B. Carmelo <laughs> Anthony. Uh Give it to me, Jewel! Wow, y you sure you want to hear this? Yeah, I'm sure. Go ahead. You're not one, one more, one more time. Give me your player A and player B. One more time. Give me your our player. player A's are Dominique Wilkins, and then my player B is Blake Griffin. My player B is Carmelo Anthony. Okay. Player A, Carmelo Anthony. Ah! No! <laughs> How is player player A's from the '80s and '90s? Uh, I missed put the other thing. Dominique Wilkins. Player B is Carmelo Anthony. Ah! Oh. Okay, that's big. James now. So I, I still, thank God. I, I, well, you stole one. I Ryan stole Dominique. Dominique. That was really big. Uh, so big. you great game one. So now it's, it was 3-1. Now it is 4-3. Four, three. Four, three. No, you have 3. You're at 4-3. Four, 4-3, three. Four, three, but I get a steal. You don't have a steal. You already stole my Kobe, bro. I didn't steal your Kobe. All right, whatever. He's salty. I, I have a, I'm down one and have a steal. Go ahead. Shifting over to the MLB part one. The topic is third baseman. In 2017 through 2019. Okay. <laughs> Player A with a .277 BA, .843 OPS, 12.4 offensive wins above replacement, okay. 1.5 defensive wins above replacement, 26 years old, 
and $39.5 million salary. Oh, I think I know who player A is. Player B, 0 0.260 BA, 0.841 OPS, 10.1 offensive wins above replacement, 7.5 defensive wins above replacement, and 26 years old as well with $1.1 million salary. I'm, I'm going to leverage the fact that I went 2-0. and You're going to have to go first because I'm not letting you steal my No, I think a. I know. I'm not letting you steal my player. I think a. I know. 39.5 mil is like an eye-popping number. There's only like a couple of players. There's only a couple of players, and there is a guy who we saw get that much this offseason. Yeah, Nolan, um, Nolan Arenado, so we both can. Correct. So well, we both lock it in Nolan Arenado for player A. That's why I'm locking in for player A, Nolan Arenado. And then... Okay, actually, that's not what I was going to say. I was going to say Manny Machado. I'm going to take Manny Machado. Take Manny Machado. I'll take oh, no one. However, Aaron. now I'm afraid that he doesn't make ninety thirty nine point five million. Oh, uh, whatever. I'm locking it in. Who has you a bigger? I'm not sure who has the bigger contract. They're pretty close. No, I think you might be right. Because no Arenado got. I don't. It, 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 it's weird. Because I don't know if total money, I think Machado got more. more but er Nolan Arenado had. But Aaron Arenado very, had less years and easily could have a bigger contract. And I'm looking at the 277. Manny Machado didn't like last year didn't hit the ball that all that well. So right, 277. Nolan, Nolan Arenado hit the ball very well last year. It's good to keep the home runs off of here. That probably would have. Yeah, that would have tipped it. That He's smart. He's a little conniving, little <laughs> smart man over there, Stat. Like, is. but really, when you look at player B, player B could be like. <laughs> 40 uh, different players in the MLB 26 right now. years old. I need old, a hint. I need a hint. Making $1.1 million. Uh, Player B is in the AL. And he, and he made the playoffs. Made the playoffs last year. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So now I'm thinking of playoff teams in the AL last year. We got the Astros. We got the Yankees. We got the Twins made a wild card game. That's three. The Red Sox won it. How old is he? He's 26. 26. Each more 27. Making yeah, I chunk almost, change. I almost said Rafael Devers from the from the Red Sox, but I don't think he's not 26 yet. He's a little. He's younger than that. He's a. I think he's a little younger than that. <laughs> but the, but the, the Twins two, did not make the playoffs last twins year. Twins in the year before they made the playoffs. Mm, see, this is really tough because my knowledge in the MLB, I will admit, is probably not as extensive as yours is. Mine's not all that extensive. So well, crazy the last extensive. three years, um, and then this season he's not making that much, but his production isn't that far off. He's only got two less of offensive war. So Way Matt, better this, on this defense. isn't it's, it, this isn't you're not gonna you know shell out a name to us that we're like wh who does that guy play for again? Like this is a this is a well known for all intents and purposes name, correct? Like, if you know baseball well, you know his name. The hell, Matt. He's like a, he's, he's, he's like <laughs> well, the, he's yeah. one of the best third baseman in baseball. He's but he's on a team. Uh, my another thing is he's on a team that. I, I can't say that. <laughs> oh, Matt. Okay. Um, one of the best third basemen in baseball in the AL. Now, let me ask you, Matt, these stats are cumulative from 2017, yeah. 18, and 19, right, right, but right. only the salary and the years are, are this okay, year. Okay, uh, uh, no, point for every, those three years are the only three years of his career. Okay. But not Ooh. for player A, even though they're the same age. Player A's played more seasons before I'm, that. I think we're both pretty confident in our player A, which are both very good guesses, by the way. Nolan Arenado and Manny Machado both got I just, like, straight up, I might take, oh, my God, I might take Devers. You might for take player Devers. B, I'm gonna have to take Devers because I don't really know. Not a, another guy isn't popping to my mind, which of course I'm about to facepalm when we hear it. But right, you won't facepalm. It's not a super obvious. Okay, name. no yeah. facepalm. I'm gonna go Devers for B. Who do you got? I don't know if that counts as a steal because I, I said it's it not a steal because you're not gonna take. You told him. You told me you weren't gonna take him. See, he's not a, 26. Like I, I'm not. I might. I might say him just so we can get the answer, but I know he's not 26. Like All right, what, 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 what do you, you think? Let me think out loud again. It's how I got Carmelo Anthony. It's how this is I not good. With me already locked in. This, right? this, this is not good. This is, this is great. Finish seventh in MVP voting. Keep him coming, no, Matt. Matt. <laughs> that's, not, that, that's not that. Matt keeps okay. giving James hints when I'm locked Keep in. Keep them coming. Uh, let's see. I'm going through all of them right now. The Yankees' third baseman has been ever changing, so I, it's not the Yankees' third baseman. Um, the Indians' third baseman. Jose Ramirez. Ooh. Let me keep going. Let me keep going. That's a good one. Jose Jose Ramirez is on my is on my tier. Um, 
Let's keep going through AL, AL playoff teams last year. The A's make a wild the A's make a wild card game last year. They did. They did make the wild card game last year, but I don't know who the A's third baseman is, so that takes them off the board. Mm. I'm gonna go with Jose Ramirez is my player B. All right, give it to me. Jewel, Ready, give it to me. Player A, Manny Machado. Let's go! <laughs> Damn. Let's go. Player B. I don't. Yeah, I don't think you guys would have gotten in this. Matt Chapman. Matt no, Chapman. and that's the that's answer. That's, 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 that's crazy. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. I cannot believe you kept a straight face when I said that. <laughs> Oh, that is literally the A's third baseman. I I am so sorry to all my all my baseball and dad. If you're listening to this podcast, I'm so sorry because I had the name and I doubted myself. I had the team and I doubted myself. All right, so it is now five three. Five three. Okay, and this is the last question of the blind resumes, and we head into trivia. I hope everyone at home is participating and having as much fun. You it's pretty fun. This is a lot of fun. Pull this up with a friend and, and kind of go at it. But all right, what is our last question of the blind resume? All right, so m- moving on to part two of the MLB. The topic will be first ballot Hall of Fame pitchers, player A from the 90s and 2000s, and player B from the 2010s. Player A with a seven-year peak, 118-36, ERA, which is 2.27 lower than the league average during that period. 11.3 strikeouts per nine with three Cy Youngs versus player B with also a seven-year peak, 118 and 41, 2.1 ERA with 1.9 lower than the league average during that period, 10.1 strikeouts per nine with also three Cy Youngs. Okay. Um, both of these pitchers are freaking dominant. Right, beast. Like, like totally absolutely beast. beast. Um, I have a better... A better idea of who player B is than player A. Right, and the, the, the stat map hint on this one is that player B played in, in the, the late 2000s, 2000s but did not become a great until the 2010s. Which is why I think player B, I almost want to put a lock on this. I think I, I got a lock B. on both of mine right now. Like you I'm ready so? to shoot. You ready think. to shoot? I'm All right. ready to shoot. Go ahead, go ahead. Who's player A, B? and here's what kind of tips my cap is that, well first off, the strikeouts per nine, and then yeah, also, I mean, you look at the average ERA of the league was much higher, um, you know, steroid era type stuff, the tail end of that. Um, I'm going to say the player A is Pedro Martinez. That's a good one. And then player B, or do you want to give your player A before I give my player Sure, B? I'll give my player A. I think my player A, and it's it's only, I'm only hesitant. I know he has a whole lot of strikeouts. I know his ERA was low. I know he won a whole lot of games. I just don't know the Cy Young counts. Right. I don't know the Cy Young, so... This might come out of left field, but I'm going to go based off dominance and not, like, you know, sure numbers or sure sign counts. I think my player A is Randy Johnson. Ooh, okay. And okay, that, that easily could be. There's a lot of there's a lot, lot of great pitchers right. in that time. And then my player B, because of stat Matt's hint, played in the late 2000s but didn't get great into the 2010 era, my player B is Clayton Kershaw. Ooh, that's a good one. I'm going to go very similar with Verlander yeah. as my player B. Could, could also. I would, this could easily go. This is big. Uh, this I, is big. You locked that in? You locked in Verlander? I got locked. Okay, Verlander shaky for you because Verlander, I would say opposite. I wouldn't say he didn't become. Uh, maybe he did wait, become great. I mean, he's great right now. He won the MVP in 2011. Won yeah. the MVP in 2011, so. Right. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm Guys, this is it. This is it. Well, no, 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 this, is, this is it for the blind resume. This is resume. the first half. This is big. Right. This is huge. This, this is, is a huge before we move on to the next segment. All right. You want to hear it? Yes, yes. yes. Player A, Pedro Martinez. Let's go. Oh, that's a big one, Jake. That's a big one. Go ahead, player B. Player B, Clayton Kershaw. Ooh, all right. All right. I'll give you a prosper. I'll give you a prosper. There we go. All right, so now we're at six. I was hoping player B would make you think of Scherzer because he – he had that rough start. Of He's career. who I initially Ooh. had. The strikeout count is what made me not go Scherzer. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure Scherzer is up near the 11 per, per 9 for That's strikeouts. who I initially put. S-H-E-R-Z-E-R, which is completely not how you spell his last yeah, name. Yeah, no. That's, That's initially And the three Cy Youngs. I, I know Scherzer doesn't have three Cy Youngs. Yeah, I think yeah. he has two. Does he have two? Yeah. I, 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 he actually might have three, one AL, two NL. Right. All right. I almost said for player B, Roy Halladay. Until you gave that, until you gave the hint, my player B was Roy Halladay. So thank you for that hint. Right. Then, that Matt hint saving happened. you all the way through here. <laughs> all right. We're, are we at halftime? I'm gonna need to stretch get some you Gatorade for, for some of that because, because that was that. That's crazy. What's the score? Will we tally that Six to right four. Now? So you're down two. This is here's this the big, thing though. This big. This big. Is that this is going to be a little bit tougher to catch up on? I think. 
Um, because this one, so now we're heading into trivia, which is multiple choice. So right. at least we're going to have an Parameters, idea right. of who is uh, going to be the answer. But Joel, why don't you take us away? Ready with number one? Go ahead. Which of these finals MVPs has never finished in the top five of MVP voting? A. Chauncey Billups. B. Paul Pierce. C. Tony Parker. And D. Dennis Johnson. Okay. I don't want to think out loud with this one because if I think out loud, right, and this is it's process of elimination. Uh, here's what I'll say: is that there are some. There's an easy answer in here mm -hmm. um, in terms of one that I don't think it is. Like there's an easy. There's a guy who you're like, oh, you know, one sticks out more than the other. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to chop him off as, as not being in the top five. I also know Matt. Running. I also know Matt. Matt definitely threw one in there that's like, don't bite on this one, but it's not it. <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying. Matt is a tough customer when it comes to... Uh... <laughs> we might have to turn this around on him one day, and I might have to play him through this ringer, because it's fun until you have to answer, <laughs> and it's not fun when you have to actually try right. to guess. I'm going to jump at the easy bait, and I'm going to lock in my answer. Lock in. I'm going to go with Dennis Johnson mm. at D. He played... I think in like the 80s, 70s and 80s, 70s and 80s, 80s which, which, which here's what's trouble, is that the NBA blew back then. And a guy, <laughs> like, Dennis, a guy like Dennis Johnson could easily have been in the in the top five of MVP voting because mm -hmm. there just wasn't that many transcendent are, players in the league. These are very good answers because one that a lot of people, especially at home, here, here's, I'll give, did we ever give the, the possibility of the answers to our audience? Did we ever state A, B, C, D? Ooh, uh, we did not. That's a good point. Did we? Yeah. We did? Oh, we did? Well, we'll do it, we'll do it one more time. So You want to hear it one more time? Yeah, go ahead. Give Guess the options. A, one more time, Chauncey Billups. Okay. B, Paul Pierce. C, Tony Parker. And D, Dennis Johnson. So a lot of people might, if you're like a very novice fan, you might, you're going to jump at Dennis Johnson, and you might jump at Tony Parker. You call me a novice fan? No, but I'm saying if, yes. But if, if you are... You might jump at Tony Parker as well. Right, that was the other one who it seems like a very low hanging fruit there. Nah, but I, I'm I'm like ninety percent sure that he finished in top five voting at least one year. Right. Um so it means it's it's either the obvious answer of Dennis Johnson or it's either Chauncey Billups or Paul Pierce. Both of which very good players yeah. in their prime. Very, very easily I mean, could have been top five. These, these are all finals MVPs. Yep. These are yeah, all finals, right, true. You know what I mean? Um, but I don't think Mr. Big Shot ever finished top five in MVP voting, so I'm going to go with Chauncey Billups. Hey, I'm locking in. Hey, Chauncey Billups. All right. Who do we have? Are those your final answers? Yeah. I, I got D. He is A. You guys are going to be shocked. It's Paul Pierce. Wow. Oh, okay. The truth. The that, truth. That is actually a little surprising. Um, Pierce was a guy who could really fill it up. The mm -hmm. truth. I mean. But it was a guy who also lived for his big moments in the playoffs, which is when MVP voting is, is kind of done and sent it over with. So... That That's does true. it does kind of make sense. Plus, he's on a big team, a great team, a great with a lot of great team. players. His like, biggest moments are in the playoffs, not really in right. the season. All right, okay. All right. All right. All right. High is seventh for him. High seventh. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's move on to number two. Who won his first ever major at the Masters in 2015 and also won the 2015 U.S. Open? We got A. Tiger Woods. B. Jordan Spieth. C. Dustin Johnson. And D. Billy Horschel. All right. This is cruel because Matt knows that we know. We know nothing. Oh, man. Golf? This is Jules' question. This is my question. Oh, Jules, you are cruel because you, you even <laughs> know that we do not know golf all that no, well. No, I think I. But I, I think I know this I think I know, too. Know. I don't really, like, I just kind of passively take it <laughs> yeah. off. Like, <laughs> Which is why. my face. But, like, I remember, like, I'm pretty, I'm just, I'm just pretty sure I remember. I think we have the same answer here. I hope, I hope so because then one of us is very <laughs> In first, I'm pretty sure it's B. Jordan. Yep, Speed. I'm in the same boat. I think it was Speed. He had an incredible, incredible run. run. I, I don't know what year. And I'm but pretty I think sure it was, it was his first ever major. And I'm pretty sure it was his first ever like major, like attending, like his first ever one that he attended. But go ahead, I'll, I'll talk last. There you go. There you go. go. Boom. Speed. All right. So it's boom. So seven now, five it's now seven five. Yep. I'm gonna need you to really tank these last like three or four questions. It was Speed's second ever Masters, but the year before he finished second. There we go. There we are. All right. All right. Okay. All right, guys. Moving on to number three. What nationality is tennis player Novak Djokovic? A. Turkish. B. Swedish. C. Serbian. Or D. Albanian. Okay, well, we could cross Albanian right off the list. I'll give that. I'll give that to you. I'm pretty sure I know this answer. So since I'm pretty sure I know it, I'm not gonna give you a chance to steal. I. It's a, if you don't know, it's a shot in the dark. If you don't know, it is a shot in the dark. Um. Djokovic, I feel like that has to be. It can't be Swedish. Uh, 
this should be easier than Come on, call, I, I, I'm calling back on Phoenix Hill Area Middle School Geography Social Studies class right now. All right, so go. here, ready for this <laughs> super hyper advanced uh, analytical thinking, we have Nikola Jokic. Oh, who that's good. Who is Serbian. Serbian, yep. I'm going to say Serbian. Jokic, See, I'm also Jokic, Jokic. Serbian. I'm going to say Serbian. Locking in. I'm locking in. We're all tied up again, gentlemen. All right. Good. Yeah. Eight, six. I shouldn't have let you think that much. I should have just I should have just aided you to, to just lock in your first one. Which you might right. have guessed Serbian either. Yeah. I would have guessed between yeah. Serbian and Turkish. Okay. Yeah. All right. Going on to number four. In 1990, two major league greats made baseball history by becoming the first father-son duo to hit back-to-back -back homers in an NBL MLB game. Which duo was this? Mm -hmm. A, Ken Griffey Jr. Ken Griffey Sr. B, Barry Bonds and Bobby Bonds. C, Jose Cruz, Jose Cruz Jr. <laughs> and D, Randy Hundley and Tom uh, Hundley. I mean, it, it's A. It's A. It's this a. is one of the more public, like publicized moments. We, a great field know, moment. It might be the big, the greatest moment in sports history, not just MLB history. Right. The, I'm, 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 I'm curious, okay. before you answer and tell us that we're right, Joel, Matt, are uh, these actual father sons right here? Is this Bobby and Barry? Are you making up names? Yeah, Bobby right Bonds is like a real MB MLB player, but those are you think you're making it up? I didn't know. Look, like for all you, you think I didn't do my homework? Like, I this stuff. No, up. I'm not not saying that, but I'm like throwing us for a loop here, because like Barry Bonds had a lot of home runs, the most home runs in MLB history. So like, so what are your final answers? Right? Right. 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 Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Yes. You're right. You're correct. Nine so, seven. So this is actually going to be well, realistically. Then, are are you, do you want to say the six one for the fans, or do you, do you want to make the six one? We're gonna say the six one, but why don't we make five? And give me a chance. Okay. Double right, or nothing. So for double five. or nothing. Oh, yeah. this is a good one too. Double so wait, what? It's it's two. So if you get it right, I tie the game up. I'm, I'm willing to tie. Then the six goes to the sixth question goes to us. Yeah. The last one. If okay. We don't, do that. If you win. We'll pose the sixth question to the viewers. All right, so if neither of us get it right, right, right. right I'll I got wear you. my Eagles stuff in shame and cry myself to sleep tonight. Ready? This is, this is as big as it gets, folks. Hold on. I'm calling it my 30. I'm calling it 30. My 30. Number five. Which of these QBs has Jerry Rice not caught a pass from? A, Matt Hasselbeck. B, Trent Dilfer. C, Jeff George. Or D, Jeff Garcia. Okay, you know what? You, Who's you're, Jeff George? You're, <laughs> <laughs> Who you're is Jeff George? Jeff George man? was the number one overall draft pick. He was the Jay Cutler of the 90s. Jay Cutler of the and 90s. Early okay, oh. so everyone forgot about him then by 2000s. Then. I'm going to let Jay you Cutler answer first since, since you're the one who really needs I gotta this. i got to put the one on the line. Or oh, so you just know. So you have a no, I won't guess. If you, here's what. Uh, but, like, I also don't want you to guess something that I'm like, oh, yeah, that's probably the right answer. Probably right. Okay, well, then, that's, that's, what, that's what we've been dealing with all game. It's kind of, I mean, I dug myself uh, in the All hole. right, then how about this? We'll both come up with an answer. Jules going to count down three, two, one. And, we'll and we're going to say the letter. Say the letter. The letter. Okay. All right, let me, let me let me think. Let me think. So let me think. We have. I know he played. I, I pre he played in the Seahawks at like the very 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 end of his career, mm -hmm. correct? So he may have called a touchdown pass from my house back. This is just a pass, not just a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Oh, just a Any pass. pass. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Dilfer was also a Seahawks quarterback. Is and a 49ers and quarterback. 49ers oh wow, wow. Jeff okay. Garcia. And, as I'm Garcia pretty sure Jeff Garcia is. He did. He def, I'm pretty sure he called a pass from Jeff Garcia. He hated Jeff Garcia. That's why he left. Yeah. All I right. Just, there you go. Look. Look, I, I, I just Tio got too much attention. Right, I, I just cut one out for you. So, all right. I had that cut. Don't don't let me take the stuff. I had that one cut out on my own. I have my answer. If you're ready, I need you to help. Ready? I don't ready? know if James is. All right, are you ready? I mean, I can sit here and try to go back and forth in my mind, but at some point, I, I gotta I gotta make a guess. So, go ahead. Three, two, one. C. B. Ooh, we got different answers. <laughs> oh, this is huge. All right, Jewel. Jewel has her hand over her mouth, which I don't think is a very good One sign for you. One of you is correct. Oh, no, that's <laughs> definitely not a good sign for me. All right, Jewel, who's right? And the winner is Jake Gallagher! No! <laughs> yes! Jewel, you were very cool for how you announced that. Just I laughing. thought she was laughing because, like, oh, my God, we got to go to the last one. All right, guys, after everything's said and done, Jake, congratulations on the win. We have one more question. For the viewers at home, which of these NBA players has a career point per game of 20 or higher? A. Gilbert Arenas, B. Michael Redd, C. Yao Ming, or D. Kevin Garnett? 
All right, and before we head into the countdown, uh, our very own stat Matt did a deep dive on the inside analytics of why Matt Ryan is underrated. Underrated? Gonna, he's underrated. It, we're going to take a step aside, and you guys can listen to that. Hey, guys. I'm Stat Matt, and this is a Stat Matt Deep Dive. Matt Ryan's criminally underrated by NFL fans and players. He was only ranked 69th on the NFL's top 100 players this year, below even someone like Baker Mayfield who's barely played in the NFL. It's just absurd. The reality of Matt Ryan's career is that he's played at a Hall of Fame level, and even for the last three seasons, he's been better than someone like Aaron Rodgers. The reason why nobody's noticed is because Ryan has had historically bad luck. You don't believe me about the Aaron Rodgers point? Since 2016, Rodgers has the same touchdown percentage with 5.6, a passer rating that's five points better than Rodgers, a yards per attempt that's over a yard higher than Rodgers, and a completion percentage that's four points better than Rodgers. And if you look into the advanced stats, there's even more clarity. Ryan has finished ahead of Aaron Rodgers in DR, QBR, and DVOA the last three seasons. Not cumulative, each of the last three seasons he's been ahead of him. Going back to 2016, people remember Matt Ryan losing the Super Bowl to the Patriots in infamous fashion, and that makes them forget about his historic season. In that year, Ryan had a passer rating of 117.1, which is exactly what Brady's passer rating was when he won MVP in 2007 and broke the touchdown record. And also in that year, Ryan averaged 9.3 yards per attempt, which is a number that Brady, Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees has never reached in their career. That postseason, Ryan played even better. He threw nine touchdowns and had zero interceptions, averaged 10.3 yards per attempt, had a completion percentage of 71.4, and had a staggering 135.3 passer rating. And in that infamous Super Bowl, Matt Ryan still had a 144.1 passer rating, the fourth best Super Bowl history. And of the eight highest rated passers in Super Bowl history, seven of them won by three or more possessions. The only one that didn't was Matt Ryan. That is some shit luck. One might argue that 2016 was a fluke year, and the reality of Matt Ryan is that he had one great year, and other than that, he's just a good quarterback who falls short when it counts. That's also wrong. Look at 2018, just last season. I know the Falcons in seven and nine, but Ryan was fantastic. His numbers look almost identical to his MVP year, just three less touchdowns, 20 less yards, and his completion percentage was only 0.5% off, which made his passer rating nine points lower, but that's mostly because of the touchdowns. But it's not just last year. In nine of the last 11 seasons, he's finished top seven in DR. The only other quarterbacks that have been top seven in DR in the nine of the past 11 years, Drew Brees and Tom Brady. Not Philip Rivers, not even Aaron Rodgers. You might ask, well, why does he have this reputation as a choker? And what about it? It's completely bullshit. It's just wrong. Here's some trivia. Which active quarterback has the highest career postseason passer rating? I'll give you a hint. It's the same quarterback that leads the NFL in fourth quarter comebacks since 2008, Matt Ryan. If you look even more into detail into clutch situations, let's look at something like third down conversions in the last five minutes of a one possession game. Since 2001, Ryan ranks fifth among all quarterbacks. The only ones above him are Peyton Manning, Ben Roethlisberger, Aaron Rodgers, and Phillip Rivers, and he's above people like Drew Brees and Tom Brady. The narrative around him has been formed because of his horrific bad luck. That's why people don't view him like this. Here are some incredibly sad examples. If you're a Falcons fan, you might not want to listen. Ryan holds the record for the highest passer rating in NFL history in a game that he lost. He holds the highest passer rating in Super Bowl history in a game that he lost. He holds the highest passer rating in an NFC Championship game in NFL history in a loss. And has the highest single season passer rating of a player who missed the playoffs. Going back to the Falcons letting him down as a team, they've had bad defenses for most of his career. Since he's entered the NFL, the Falcons have averaged a 26th ranked defense according to DVOA. Just one more note on Super Bowl 51. The way I see it, Ryan sealed the Falcons' Super Bowl victory only for bad play calling to snatch it away. Ryan's throw to Julio Jones was through an impossible window, and Jones made a great catch, but Ryan knows what Jones can do, and he threw it, and he sealed the win, and then Kyle Shanahan decided to be an idiot. 
Uh, they are at the 23 yard line. All you have to do is run it three times. You win by 11. But Shanahan called a pass. And Ryan did take a sack, which is not good. But they still have Matt Bryant as their kicker. And they're in a dome. A 51 yard kick is fine. Even if you do a run on third down, get three more yards. 48 yard kick, Matt Bryant makes that at least 85% of the time. But again, Kyle Shanahan decided to call a pass. And what happened? Jake Matthews took a dumb holding penalty. That's one of the worst plays an offensive lineman's made in NFL history you can make an argument for. And then on third down, there's an incompletion, and we know the rest. Just to show how weird that series of downs is, since 2010, the only time a team wound up punting after having first and 10 at the opponent's 23-yard line was the Falcons in Super Bowl 51. That's regular season and postseason combined. I'm not saying that Ryan is in the Manning-Brady tier, or even the breeze Rogers tier, historically speaking, but I am saying he's a notch below the breeze Rogers tier. And if you're only a notch below the Breezes and Rogers of the world, then you should be guaranteed a spot in Canton, but I'm worried that his shit luck might cost him his Hall of Fame bust. All right, guys, we're heading to the countdown. Number five. Number five is the number of quarterbacks to win an AFC championship since 2001. That is Brady, Manning, Roethlisberger, Gannon, Gannon and Joe Flacco. Rich Gannon, huh? Rich Gannon, yeah. That's a little surprising. That is a little surprising right there. But, I mean, are those five Hall of Famers? Are you putting Joe Flacco in the Hall of Fame? No, that's three Hall of Famers. Let's not go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> and three MVPs, but Gannon's the MVP and Roethlisberger's not. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. Well... Big Ben's been on some pretty good teams, but been a benefactor of some. Really I'd probably players. take Roethlisberger over Gannon. I think many people yeah, would. Yeah, but, but, yep. All right, number four. The number of decades Vince Carter will play in if he plays a game after January first. Half man, half amazing. Here's a, a, he's full amazing man. Like especially considering like he's not one of these guys that just sits back and shoot threes. What well, he is maybe now, but like he is a guy who predicated his game yeah. off of his hops and his athleticism and like he's been able to be a mentor now in Atlanta and a couple other different places like he's definitely he's a first ballot Hall of Famer he's 100 percent I mean we top 10 and three-pointers made uh won a dunk contest I mean he's gonna it to me is the best at least in-game dunker if not best dunker yeah, in no, NBA in history um there's nothing, nothing you can say about Vince Sanity he's just he's purely amazing agree agree number three number three is the number of players from the 2003 draft class to make one of the all-decade teams um, that the NBA NBA.com uh, announced. Uh, Stat Matt, do we have those those three plays exactly? It's LeBron, Wade, and Melo. LeBron, yep. Wade, and Melo. The 03 banana. banana boat minus Chris Paul is from that 03 draft class. Yeah. They say next to the 84. Are you taking the 84 draft class? Or you taking the 03 draft class? I mean, class? look, look, you got the greatest in the 03 draft class, bing, man. Bing, bing. Come on. Come bing, on. bing, bing, bing. Number two. Uh, the number of teams that use a two tight end set on 200 plus plays last season. That's the Eagles and Texans. Uh, they call that 12 personnel, I believe. And, and here's what I'm going to tell you is that. They call that the jumbo package. Right. <laughs> they're going to see a bunch more of that in the NFL this year. The Colts will probably jump up there with Ebron and Doyle. Um, there's a bunch of other duos, but it's just such a tough matchup. For the defense, I think that you're going to see a lot of teams. The Patriots were the innovators on that. Well, yeah, when when you had back in our heyday Aaron Hernandez and Gronk, Killers. but it, it's such a hard matchup for people because, especially when you have tight ends now, that the ability to run patterns so well, like you put a corner on them, they're too small. Uh, you put a linebacker on them, they're too slow. Who you going to who's going right. to run? Yep. Bring it down to number one. Number one is for the only player in MLB history to have a career war wins above replacement of 70 or higher by the age of 27. That's one Mr. Mike Trout. Mm -hmm. Not only is this man going to pull down MVP again this season, but we might be watching the best baseball player of all time in our midst. A player who, from the moment he stepped on the diamond, was in his prime and will be uh, until until he leaves. Yeah, like, this this man is awesome. literally amazing. And we, we take it for granted, I think. I think we take for granted how good Mike Trout is. We He doesn't get talked enough about as, as nearly as much as he should, maybe because he's on a lackluster team like the Angels. But this dude's a, this we have all amazing players on this countdown today. Mike Trout's just the, the last one. For sure. 
All right, that's all. I'm almost out of time, but we can get some shots about the buzzer. Julie, have anything to say at the buzzer? I do. I I know summer's almost coming to a close, and I know we still have a couple weeks left. But I'm bummed, man. I, I like. Are you as hot outside? I love the summertime. I'm super bummed about it. As much as much as I'm excited for football, I'm gonna miss going down the shore. You know how much I love yeah, going, down love the shore, going down the shore. So. That's it. Jake, anything to say at the buzzer? Uh, I can't wait for the summer to be over. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, no, well, like, I just burn way too easily. It's yeah, a whole yeah. thing, but I cannot wait for football. I'm getting geared up for fantasy season. We'll probably do a fantasy, an entire fantasy episode on here. Yeah, you'll, Hopefully we you'll can survive have... over that. Oh, uh, dude, I'm in a dynasty <laughs> league. I'm in like How three many other different... How many football leagues That I pay totally. money for this year, I will be in four... Five, maybe? It's it's more than I like to do. Usually I like to keep it to three. <laughs> it's more than I like, so why it's doable? Because I'm friends with a lot of rooting people who like every player in the NFL. Yeah, yeah, like that's, that's, like, that's why you can't do it, is because you end up rooting against uh, rooting for guys who you're going up against in another league and it's like what do you prioritize? It's just it's really tough, but I'm going to be doing it. Uh, I'm, I'm, I love fantasy football, man. It's awesome. I can, I can hear it in your voice. Uh, the countdown that I have is um, in, in news that, that surfaced uh, yesterday or two days ago uh, with the NCAA passing this new rule that um, now uh, requires agents for, for players that are entering the NBA draft. Uh, they re- released a, a bunch of requirements or prerequisites the agents have to have in order to be able to talk to these players in order to get them shoe deals, um, to get them leveraged to the right teams. And one of them is that they have to have a college degree. Um, and that, that preceding that rule, uh, rules out one of the highest rate or highest rising stars in, in the agency world. And that's LeBron's agent, Rich Paul. Um, so here's, here's all that I will say about it. If, if you haven't read on about this issue, I implore you uh, to go read about it and, and to read more about it because it, it's very interesting. And I know this is something that, this isn't, didn't just happen with the NCAA. They have been actually, you know, as you read about it, been looking for ways to, uh, to make sure that, you know, as, as their players go from the MTAA to the NBA, and as they're being represented, that they're being represented legally and fairly and that everything is on the up and up. That is what I 100% understand. What I do not understand is why this comes out now and that why you make a rule that, completely takes out one of your rising stars in what you hope to be is, is a, a big industry uh, and that's something that helps. Because if you think about every other major sporting entity, major sporting league, they would not make a rule that takes out the highest rating star. Imagine if the NFL said that you can't make no look passes. Well, you know why they do it, right? It's because they don't want what the NBA has on their hands right, right. now. For better or for worse, they don't want, you know, the next Zion saying, oh, you're not going to give me this dorm. I'm going to hold out. I'm, gonna hold uh, out. I'm, 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 I'm not going to play. They already, they're already having that problem with not paying their players. They, they just lost probably one of the, probably who was going to be the best player coming out of high school, R.J. Hampton. They already lost him to Australia. Why? Because they, want, they won't pay. They won't shout out that money. And he already came up and said, this is why I'm going overseas because of stuff like this. Yep. I'm not going to say a whole lot about it. Here's what I will say is Rich Paul is an amazing agent. He represents LeBron, Anthony Davis, and many others. And I don't think he's doing anything wrong. Um, but I will say that when some most of the time when th- something smells fishy, it is fishy. And I showed that the NCAA is aware of the backlash that it's going to cause and the result of what they're doing because they're taking out one of the most rising stars of the NBA right now. But that's all the time we have for this episode. Big ups to Kyle uh, Sobieski, Greg Barron, and Stat Matt Robinson behind the camera. For my partner, Joel Schmidt. It's been real, it's been fun, it's been real fun. For my main man, Jake Galley, who won today and got lucky, I'm James Jackson, and these have been the facts. Straight up.